In this episode today, I'm headed to the North Kenyan coast near a town called Malindi in search of mud crabs. I'm going to meet a couple of my suppliers up there who are actually mud crab fishermen. So I'm looking forward to really seeing how these guys go out there, how they catch the crabs. I understand it's quite a tricky process. It's, it's determined very much by the tides. For me, it's, it's really exciting because, I mean, I've been eating mud crabs since I was a child. We serve them a lot in the restaurant because they're absolutely delicious. You know, you've got massive claws on these things. There's a cottage tamarind industry up in this area of the Kenyan coast. So I'm gonna go out, find a tamarind tree, you know, have a look at how they process it, grow it. And tamarind being quite sour, and the crab being very sweet in flavor, I think the two will marry very well, and I'm gonna knock up a very, very simple dish out there. I've always thought that one of Kenya's staple breakfast breads, called a mandazi, would go really, really well with this crab dish I wanna make. Finding someone who makes them shouldn't be a problem, as they're available in most roadside cafes around the country. Right, I'm here with Sidi and Zawadi, who are two ladies who run a cafe just here in Malindi, and they're going to show us how they make... Uh, <laughs> they obviously think that's extremely amazing. <laughs> they're going to show us how they make mandazis. Now, a mandazi is basically a Swahili donut. Now, what I want these for is to have them with our crab, because I don't think... I've never seen anybody eating mandazis with... We call our mandazi na ka, pamoja. Huh? Ka. No, as you can see, I don't think they ever have. So I want to show these guys maybe a little bit of a twist on it. But I need to get some, so they're going to show me how they... Oh, yeah. On this, I mean, this is just plain flour. We're looking at about a cup of sugar there. It's just mixing it all up nice, nicely, and then what have we got here? Yeah. Just instant yeast. She's just thrown a whole load of hot oil into the flour there. It's really increased the temperature of the of the flour. So she's just kneading the dough now. For that amount, they reckon will make 216, 17 in So now she's just going to cut them up into little pieces. Now he piece more than his hand, as he So she measures the dough balls by the size of her hand, and she says that will make four mandazis. So they will uh, set them out to proof in these perfectly shaped balls. That will give them an idea of how many they're going to get, I guess. So they'll then re-knead this, roll it out, cut them up into a sort of triangular shaped thing and then deep fry them straight away. Too. And that there is a Kenyan donut. As you can see, they're puffed up really nicely. Awesome deep fried bread flavor. Uh, aroma, should I say. Ooh, hot. You'll see that, you know, together with the crab, that is quite light and, you know, crispy, but this lovely doughy bit in here will be awesome for soaking up that crab and the, the, all the juices and stuff and go, I think it'll be just delicious. Now that we have our mandazis, I'm going to get some fresh tamarind that I need to really add depth of flavour to the dish. Yeah, I'm here in, uh, just on the banks of the Sabaki River with Chengo and this tree up here is right by his house and he has a few more in the back out here where he will pick and sell the tamarind at market. Chango will show us two ways he, can, he, he gets it out of the tree. In a little tree like this, he can just knock it down with a stick. And in the bigger trees, he would send his daughter, because he's a little bit. Just use this, this pole, basically, with a little hook on it. Oh, good hands. Look at that. Ah, that's how it's done. Pulling the tamarind down with a stick was proving unsuccessful, as the pods on the lower branches were dried out. So Chengo sent his daughter up the tree to select the best one she could find. Chengo then showed me how to process them. To process it, it's, it's pretty simple once it's picked. It's just to pick the, the outer bark off, and then you leave this membrane here, which holds all the seeds together. Once it's picked and, I mean, peeled and, and de-membraned, that's it. And uh, he packs them and sends them, sends them to market. Even if you don't think you've used tamarind, um, it's a key ingredient in a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, Worcester sauce particularly, turn, turn, turn the bottle over, you'll see on, on the back of it. And I think, I mean, it's just gonna be fantastic for what we need it for, just to add that sour balance to the dish. 